Keep 100% of your claim. G4 Claims. If you've been hurt in a road accident that wasn't your fault, you should really talk to G4 Claims first. Unlike road accident solicitors, we don't charge you for our services, which could see you better off. To keep 100% of your compensation, have a chat with Nicole and the team. You'll be glad you did. Search online for G4 Claims. Keep 100% of your claim. G4 Claims. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Selic, the Thunder, the delayed edition. We were meant to be with you on Friday um, as regularly scheduled. Things happen, things changed. Happy days, the G4 boys have accommodated us back in this morning. So we're here with you on a Monday. It's going to be a fantastic preview show for episode 121 ahead of Celtic's Europa League game against Atalanta. Europa League. What did I say? <laughs> Champions League, sorry. We're the big boys, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting this mixed up with the Rangers. Uh, that's terrible, isn't it? So, oh, wow. Um, Champions League, sorry. God almighty. Uh, and we're back to the three-man set-up today. There is only three of us because Callum has literally just got back from New York, so we gave him the episode off. And uh, today I'm joined by the, the two beside me, starting off with Kieran. Who is jetting off tomorrow to, to mm-hmm. go to the game? You'll be in Atalanta, you'll be in Bergamo, I should say. Are you excited? Uh, aye, I mean, I don't know so much for the Celtic game. I think <laughs> <laughs> um, AC Milan, uh, Club Bruges might end up being highly to the trip the way we play away from home in Europe, but nah, I'm buzzing for it to be fair. Gutted, never got to go to Dortmund, so it's good to. Finally be getting away. Uh, I rub it in my, don't you? Um, <laughs> for people who might be wondering, or, you know, go and wear them. So it's you, Callum, and our mate Mark, obviously. Uh, I had jury duty scheduled, which I'm now out of, no longer doing, but in the midst of pulling out of jury duty, the flight's doubled in price, and I am refusing to pay it. So I'm not going. You've got to tell us, me, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to those that are willing. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if flights drop in price dramatically, who knows? Maybe I'll make a last minute booking, but it's looking very unlikely. Anyway, uh, Dylan, I am guessing that you're not going to, no. to Bergamo, but you are here today in, in Wishaw, which oh. is <laughs> heaven on earth. Next level, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? How was your weekend? No, it was a good week. It was a busy weekend, wasn't it, with the results, but uh, I it was a Interesting, good game to go to, and then I am. I don't know if I'm excited or nervous for Wednesday. It's a bit of both. So, aye. Aye, well, it. it seems to be the the mixed response at the minute, and it like you know, are we on the the verge of another hiding in Europe or, or whatnot? We will talk about it. We're going to do the Atlanta preview, the kind of second portion of the show. So we'll get through the weekend first. We'll talk about all of that. Um, Dylan, this is your first time in a three man setup. Aye. Which is nice. I think people will be excited to have what because when you're in four man, obviously you've got to get rid of everybody in the table. I think people are excited to hear more of your opinions today. So. Aye, I should be good, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> but in the episode, I'll like, get yeah, him off. Four man medicine. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk about the weekend then. Uh, by the way, if you haven't already, once again, I'm going to plug it because it worked well last time. We've got a few people doing it, but we want even more reviews. If you haven't, go over to Spotify. Please rate us five stars. Give us a review. Leave us a review. Whatever. Um, it would be much appreciated. So jump over there. Do that now. Let's talk about the weekend. Celtic somehow extended their lead over Rangers in the league table, but we didn't extend their lead over the title challengers, Aberdeen, because Celtic drew to all at Celtic Park at the weekend. Rangers went on to lose 1-0 yesterday, um, but a frustrating one, Kieran, as we bottle a, a 2-0 lead. I know, see after that first half, but I thought we were, no, I wouldn't say cruising, I don't even think we were, we weren't up to scratch, I thought, in the first half, but it could have been so much more, the game should have been put to bed in that first half, then the second half, they came out clearly wanting it more, they made the changes to come at us, and in that second half as well, I just thought we couldn't handle the way they were counter-attacking, the pace they had with duking that up, up the top line, so there was obviously the brilliant pass through for Jamie McGrath, but and scales got caught the wrong side there's a whole lot of individual things you can pick out for that game but I think the the main thing is just the drop off and concentration mm-hmm. maybe the mentality for the second half because I thought in the first half it took us a wee while to get into the game but 
we had plenty of chances also at the end of that game. There's obviously the the debates that have been raging on about what happened at the end, but obviously it wasn't a penalty. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't hit his hand. Uh, even if it did, it bounced up off his, his leg first. It's just... It's a frustrating one because I thought we had that in the bag. Turn it up, full stadium singing. <laughs> fuck <laughs> you, Aberdeen, we're going to win Aberdeen. the week. And then we had to listen to them sing Fuck You So to get the end. So it's things and roundabouts. But nah, a frustrating one. But I'm not going to let myself be sort of dragged into the conversations that have been happening on the old Twitter. Mm -hmm. Maybe try to play this up as being a bit of a disaster. Granted, it wasn't the best showing, but I don't think it's. It, I don't think it merits the sort of panic stations people have went to and the extremes that people seem to have mm. taken online, but I suppose that's just Twitter for you, isn't it? Well, I've, everybody knows my my thinking, and I, mean, I made a full video dedicated to it yesterday, and uh, I, I'm assuming most people here that are listening to this have probably watched it, so I, I'm not going to kind of bear my own opinions down again, because what's the point in that? The reason the podcast is to get other voices. Dylan, we will come on to the bigger picture in a moment, uh, that is the, maybe the debate online with, over the performance, and, and the last few performances, <clears throat> but in the game itself, just talking about the, the 90 minutes against Aberdeen, what do you think What do you think went wrong for Celtic? What was what was different about our, our performance at the weekend that cost us? I mean, just touching on what Keelan says, it just felt weird, like you were turning up, I was saying to the, my pal I was at the game, it was just, it felt too something was going to happen because it was like 2 nothing. it just felt too easy like, if that makes sense so again I think everybody was talking about it Carter Vickers is that, mm -hmm. that's a big miss again I feel like every time Carter Vickers isn't playing something we drop points or dodgy performances here and there at the back but no I think you just need to give credit to Aberdeen I think they proved a lot of people wrong including me so um, I don't see many teams come to Celtic Park 2 nothing down um, and pull it back credit the first goal Kieran said it was some ball from McGrath um, but the second goal was quite lucky but you take that against in these games against teams like us so no credit Aberdeen but I don't think it's an overreaction I don't think Celtic were pure terrible or anything like even though we threw away 2-0 but I don't know how we didn't score at the end so that can change games and I just need to move on to the next and I think it did help but Rangers slipped up as well and we're still 6 points clear now so. and that's the thing you know like you've touched on it there Dylan on another day we probably score four or five goals mm -hmm. in that game. Aberdeen literally took their only two chances of the game. It was a couple of stupid errors for Celtic um, it, it, that led to the goals. I think on another day, Celtic walk away from that game yesterday. We're all happy, Kieran, and we don't we avoid all of this conversation. Mm -hmm. But this is a team that finished second after... Or not, sorry, not finished second, who are second <laughs> after all. prediction. Bold prediction. Yeah, well, I mean, the way it's uh, gone, yeah, it's no, not going to be much of a challenge bold. for a second. But it's the team who right now are, are, are... They are where they are because they've played so well. And, I mean, credit to Jimmy Thielen for coming to Celtic Park, setting up in a way that, A, frustrated Celtic, but B, took advantage of the chances mm -hmm. they've got. Because usually, teams come to Celtic Park, they play 10 men behind the ball, but they don't get the chances. Yeah. They don't score the goals. But Aberdeen have done it at both ends, and, mm -hmm. and ultimately, it's... Bare dividends for See, as Dylan was saying as well, it's about giving credit to them because, but going into the game, you were like on the way there, you were telling me people in your comments were thinking <laughs> we were going to scud them. So people are saying reverse Dortmund. Like, but like, I, I genuinely did not go into that game thinking anything other nope. than this is going to be a tight game. The only time I sort of let myself get carried away with it was when we went 2 0 up, and I thought, yeah. all right, maybe we, we will kick on here and get a, a good few goals, but. Then they got themselves right back into it. But the point I want to make is, I said it earlier, but the way they hit us in the counter-attack was frightening because we... I don't think we were over-committed. We were playing the way we normally play, but when you're... You can get away with that against some of the other teams now, but Aberdeen have got quality pace up front as well. And you've seen that on yep. on Saturday, the pace that they broke against us. But any time we were up, they still kept three players ready mm -hmm. to counter-attack. And the amount of times, granted... Maeda was at fault for gifting the ball I thought that was another issue there was a lot of sloppy passing and it was just a bit of a turgid game I thought because obviously you had all the stuff where their players I think one of the players went down about three or four times with mm -hmm. fucking cramp, cramp. I'm like, that's a piss take but <laughs> <laughs> I mean it, I suppose you could argue that, that shows that they all put their all into uh, playing yeah. isn't that but it, it's, it's, it is frustrating but that you've got to get credit and I'm not going to get too down about it. No, it's, I, a, it's a long season ahead, and I, I I don't think it's the disaster some people are making it. No, absolutely not. And obviously, it, it probably doesn't help, Dylan, that we are coming into the, a couple of games where we haven't performed to our optimum abilities following the Dortmund result. And I think that's what's maybe kind of led to people breaking down a wee bit and, and overreacting. But just to come back to what Kieran said a couple of points ago, 
there has been a bit of an overreaction online, I would say. And listen, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but at the end of the day, and you touched on this before we started recording, people um, have said that Celtic need a challenge. We get a challenge. And now we're pissing our pants at it, you know, we're wet in the bed. So it, what what is best for Celtic? Is it getting a challenge? Is it steamrolling teams? Celtic aren't entitled to steamrolling teams every week. So what have you made to the, the reaction following the game? I mean, it's that way as well. For me personally, I, I like, I'm enjoying it. I think, like, we've started the season brilliant. We spoke about it earlier, like, cut a wee dodgy results and now we're starting to get a bit panicky. Mm-hmm. But it's a, a kind of nice feeling because, like, Aberdeen are trying to go for their Leicester City season here. And we've always wanted a team in Scotland to step up to Celtic Rangers. And Aberdeen so far are doing it. It's still early days, but they've came to Celtic Park and sort of gave us a bit of a statement by getting a result for the 2 nothing down. So, I, I think we should just... Like Celtic, keep faith in Celtic. They'll do the business and just enjoy it as it goes along. But I credit Aberdeen, and it's interesting as well because Aberdeen's playing Rangers soon, which will suit us. End Somebody's going to drop points there, and I don't know who you want to drop points there <laughs> as well. So <laughs> that'll be an interesting Wednesday night. I, I wonder what point we actually turn around to Aberdeen and say, like, you know, they, they need to keep this up for another. That's the thing. I remember I brought this point up in, in I think my match reaction video, like. Nobody really took Leicester seriously till it was like match day 27, match day 28, and they were like, right, okay. So, I mean, Aberdeen have got a big job to do. They need, can they keep it going that long? It's far too early to tell. But they came to Celtic Park in this position. They had to be treated with respect. As Kieran said, there was no part of me that went into that game thinking Celtic will win this easily today. It was going to be a challenge from the first whistle to the last, and Celtic got the challenge. And I don't think we can cry about it when we suddenly get one. It makes no sense. But I guess then that means, and we've got to come on to Atlanta, is... We do need a better result on, on mm-hmm. Wednesday, or at least a better performance. Um, Ross County, or Dortmund, we were poor, I should say. County, we weren't great. Aberdeen, we obviously weren't great. So we just need to maybe restore the faith a little bit, as, as Dylan's touched on, Kieran. I know. I think, looking ahead to Wednesday, I, I mean, I was saying to you earlier, I think a run of fixtures isn't exactly the, the, the perfect no. run of games for the team to maybe get a good win and get the confidence back, because we're having to travel away to... Atlanta, then Fur Park, then is it Dundee mm-hmm. at home? Then the semi final against Aberdeen again. Hopefully, we can the biggest right threat any to the treble this season. But nah, it's it, and then Sorry, immediately good. following that you've got Leipzig, haven't you? Yes. So I mean, it's it's a pretty horrid run of games. I feel like we get to this point of the season. This is when fans maybe start to because it's such a packed fixture list, and mm-hmm. you've got these hard games in between that can dent your confidence if we. We do take a hiding, say, on Wednesday, which after Dortmund isn't that <laughs> out <laughs> of the realms like of possibility. Us. But nah, you, you've got to have a bit of confidence that Rogers can get us a better result anyway on Wednesday. And yeah, I think the Dortmund one really did dent the confidence because we went into that game if, on the back of a 6 0 mm-hmm. win away from home, granted against St. Johnson. But it's I'm, I'm fearful that people might lose the heat again if we do get. Well, talking Pumped about on Wednesday. Right, talking about losing the heat. One of the reactions that Dunbar had in from the weekend and was the the, the people like you know, uh, Engels waste of money, such and such waste of money, scales terrible, blah blah. People have poor games. Maida was nowhere to be seen oh, at the weekend. Sure. Kuhn was nowhere to be seen at the weekend. Engels, I thought wasn't even that bad in the first half. Mm-hmm. Just second half, the whole team kind of fell apart. And and that's the thing. As soon as a poor result happens. You know, it's suddenly questioning everything that you've been working towards. And we can't just suddenly forget that this is a Celtic side who were steamrolling the league for the first six or seven games, breaking records, won 5 1 in the Champions League for the first time in, in their history. Um, you know, the, these things happening, and there's no denying, Dylan, there's no denying that obviously Dortmund has dented the confidence a little bit. But I think people are quick to forget that the games that have followed have been difficult. You know, we went to Ross County, one of the hardest places to go in the league. We play Aberdeen, second in the table, matching a stride for stride, and obviously Dortmund was Dortmund. So, you know, you've got to bear with the team in these these rough patches, and, and you've got to, and, I'm a, and I think rough patches are actually a stretch, but these hard runs of games, you know, these, you're going to see kind of peaks and troughs in the performances. It's natural, it's so many games a year. Yeah, definitely, and I think touching what you said there about Ross County, like, 2-1 late winner like you've seen it last season and that's a hard place to go even mm-hmm. for us we've seen a lot of struggles there and that's the games that can win you a title you've seen what happened to Rangers when they went in that gave us a big boost with the 3-2 game so that was a big win in the end with a late winner and then 
Aberdeen as well was like two and a half, fair enough, we threw it away. But if you look at it for the other side, we've only conceded three goals in the league. And then one was a penalty, which was an unlucky handball for scales. So you get home with that and then the Aberdeen, the second one's a deflection. It's not much you can do about it. So at the end of the day, we've only conceded three goals as well. Like we've been pretty solid all season. And I think just the Dortmund game was obviously... As you said, we've struggled a wee bit since then, but if you look at it overall, we're still in a good position. Like it's not the season's been fine, but I think sometimes the Celtic fans you expect ten out of tens every week. But mm-hmm. I just need to go on, mate. I think I, it's a full faith from Celtic, and we just move on to Wednesday, and hopefully it's a good game to bounce back to and prove ourselves. I like Ho- that. Just gotta get on, mate. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna put that on a poster behind us. Just <laughs> gotta get on, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Um, aye. So that, I mean, anything else that you want to throw in about the weekend uh, before we turn our attentions to Europe? Hey, um, I mean, even just on the point you were making about the the sort of reaction to players like Engels, mm-hmm. I mean, this is what I've always said oh, on this man. podcast and about mm-hmm. uh, the, second, the, the second we spend big money on a player, they're under a microscope and en- they, they need to be 10 out of 10s every week in the eyes of some supporters or they're going to immediately turn on them. Because mm-hmm. I, I made that point maybe you a made couple of years. And I'm like, I, I, I always said I kind of dread the day that we actually do spend money because fuck being that player having to deal with the, the shite they're going to have to part with uh, some of their support. And uh, I'm being proved right because Engels maybe has a few bad games. I didn't even think he was that bad in the first half on uh, Saturday either, what you said, but he obviously ended up getting hooked. But I hope he can get a goal or something because he was, was close a couple of times as well. I mean, yeah. obviously he hit the bar, but that was just the sort of. I thought a lot of what we were doing in the first half was mm-hmm. actually coming through him. To be I, quite honest, I, I thought he was, but obviously some people didn't see it that yeah. way. But he made the ball as well, didn't he? The Kyogo for the the tatty first goal. So mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. And it, yeah. I said it yesterday, Kieran. So I, I hope people don't think we're just on cahoots and copying each other's opinions. But it is true. Um, like, no, I, I am not. I'm absolutely not a a bold sympathiser by any stretch I call out the board when I need to and all the rest of it but sometimes I actually sit there and I go no wonder they give us the middle finger and spending money because we're ungrateful <laughs> wee bastards like <laughs> spend 11 million a player he's got like three goals four assists in his first seven games yet apparently he's a, a fraud I don't get it I, I don't get it neither nah but it is what it is um, that was the weekend Celtic as I said do extend their lead over Rangers um, <laughs> because they lost at Rugby Park that's fucking hilarious out there I know it spelled some blushes on her end to <laughs> be fair uh, but that's the thing even if they did win yesterday would would you have felt any nah. threat at all Just I think it was that way I was saying to you Ryan I was like like what Rangers, it's like you don't really see that their fans are saying it. They don't see a style of playing. Mm-hmm. Like I would have took a draw with them yesterday as well, like because yeah. you didn't really fancy them scoring at Rugby Park. Like I think we were talking about it. Like Kelly had a good couple of chances. Like they were and no one control, but like it was a good result yeah, for them. It was kind of a deserved team. result. Like, ah, Rangers yeah. fans said that like one nothing late winner, so it was just an extra bonus to, to us. I think because I would have took a draw. Well, the, I think that the what I can take away from yesterday's game against Rangers is I think the the landscape will change in some way very soon because I don't see him making it to the end of the year. See, I would honest. say that, but they, they genuinely just gave him a four year contract. I I, but it, I, I, I don't even mean it in the jokey way. Can they afford to sack him? I don't I, know. A lot of their fans seem to be saying they can, like, we can't afford to sack him. Uh, so, but I get, they're sort of stuck in that, oh, we can't keep sacking managers thing, but I'm like, you keep hiring fucking dud shit. Like, I, 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 I said to my dad, yeah, not even turn this into a, a Rangers podcast, but I wonder what would have happened if they ever just did give Derek McInnes the job because I don't think he, I think he would have done better than every single one of the ponkers that they've had in charge. I genuinely believe that. They signed Matty Kennedy. And <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Hayes. <laughs> the Aberdeen. See, now it wasn't even McInnes that signed Hayes, was it? Well, he did the first time, probably. Uh, fuck knows. I just picked a random Aberdeen player and it was him that came to mind. Anyway, uh, we'll keep laughing at Rangers because why not? Uh, we don't actually have quizzes today, um, which you might moan it, but if you want a podcast that realistically had to happen because we have very limited time in here today because it's a Monday morning I believe that G4 are busy um, I did message our quiz master Kieran before the show but I'm assuming he'll be working he did have quizzes for us but he just I've, must have forgot I've, I've got one sort of oh, tucked away in my notes half, half time uh-huh. uh, do what, we'll do a half time it, it's, we'll it's only four questions time. but I never got to finish it oh. all these months ago but right, so, what, what it, kind is it? so it's I, I stole it for the flat chat back in me, but oh, right, it's, okay. what minute were these iconic Celtic goals scored in? 
Right, it's just closest to. Right. Closest right. to it, the two years. Right. See who gets points. So there's, there's four. Aye, there's, so there's four separate get, goals I've got here. So we're getting two each? Or is it? No, I'm oh, just right, meaning okay. like the two right. years can. Oh, the first eight or something, maybe. Oh, whatever. Aye, closest to it. As, as soon as I say it. I know it. As soon as I say it, just jump in and hang you because right, we could okay. copy answers. But right, right, okay. So it's starting off very iconic. You know what's way. probably a good way to do it? What? <coughs> so I'm a big fan if I've not mentioned it of Good Mythical Morning right <laughs> and uh, when they have games like this usually Stevie the producer would say 3, 2, 1 and they've got to say it at the same time so they don't copy mm-hmm. each other Aye. so even yeah, if you right. say Aye. right I'll give you a wee second to think Aye. and then they're 3, 2, 1 right. like Tom Rogic versus Aberdeen 2017 Scottish Cup final I'll give you a few seconds mm. okay. 3, 2, 1 9, 9 I'll both give you the point, but it was <laughs> right in the middle. Did you get the actual second death for that? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. That's not uh, my stuff. Olivier that, and that. Cham versus Lazio away. Oh, right. Oh, all right. Oh, sugar. Right. Give you a wee second. Okay. Three, two, one. 95. Kevin oh, takes the point there. 95. Was it 95? Why did I go 88? Why did I go so early? <laughs> I just made the chip and I was like, how long was left after that goal? I was like, oh. <laughs> do, you know why, do you know why I probably struggled with that one? And I know I can't really use this as an excuse, but see, actually being at the game and no seeing the be mm-hmm. uh, even though I was at the Aberdeen game, but I feel uh, like I've watched that goal mm-hmm. so many more times and I've made I really happen. hope these are the right times. I can't imagine if I back checked them. This one, it's a wee bit more rogue because it's not the goal you'd think it would be. Right. Victor Wanyama versus Barcelona. Right. What minute was that scored in? Alright, okay. Right, I'll give you three second. Three, two, one. Twenty. Well, Dylan closest by one minute. Twenty one. Oh, Twenty one minutes in. Got mm-hmm. my numbers the wrong way around. <laughs> I said twelve. And then this one is the, the last one we've got. I'm sorry it's only four, but obviously. I need to get this to draw. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but it is Odson Edward in the three two game at Ibrox twenty eighteen. Oh. The winning goal this when ten men one. won the league. Oh, oh, right. I've got an answer. Let me just fact check this for now. <laughs> 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 right. Three, two, one, sixty nine. Bang on from Dylan. <gasps> How are you so good? At <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The minute man here. Oh Jesus! Good, good, well done, Dom. Uh, I finally won something on this podcast, <laughs> man. Come on. That's because you didn't have to pick set here, set here. <laughs> case of the Mondays. <laughs> oh God, I, I've, I've got the move. I've got a case of the Mondays. Um, uh, I, I'm afraid that's all I've got. But <laughs> do you know what? It was good. It was a good way to break up the show while giving us a halftime quiz. That was fun. To that was fun. I enjoyed that. I think uh, that'd be good if we obviously have like I don't know five and. We sort of, yeah, mm. sure. you know, I, I, but I, I, I like that. It was good. Well done, Kim. Step nice one, Kim. Um, sadly, we're going to have to talk about Atlanta, though, um, <laughs> which is never great. And we'll try and get, get through this uh, pain free as possible. Um, it is match day three in the Champions League. It's been mixed fortunes a 5 1 win against Slovan Bratislava, a 7 1 loss in Dortmund. Um, really, there is no telling which way this game can go. But we are facing the Europa League winners. We are facing the only team to beat Bayer Leverkusen in their fantastic season last year. They didn't just beat them, they beat them 3-0. Adam Ola Lookman with a hat-trick in the final. They've struggled so far this season, Dylan. I'll start with you. They've not had a great campaign in Serie A, but they are still a top, top side. And we said the same thing about Dortmund, who weren't having a great season heading into the Bundesliga campaign. So, um... What's your thinking? What's your initial thoughts coming into Wednesday? I mean, the Dortmund game was a nice reality check, wasn't it? Because I think we were sitting in this podcast hopeful, but as you said, um, Dortmund didn't have the best start either. Atlanta's not having the best start, but when Celtic's coming to town, it doesn't really mean it these days, does it? But uh, nah, hopefully we can pick ourselves up and just... We've been talking about it, the away form in Europe's just absolutely dreadful. Like you're just hoping to finally get something like, as we're talking about the Lazio game, they hopefully shades of that and get a historic result in Italy. But I think you just, you'd probably take a draw again. Like you just, as long as we don't, you see it in Dortmund the way we started, we were just all over the place. I don't know if Carter Vickers will be playing, but mm-hmm. you just need a steady ship and just start hopefully a lot calmer. Uh, don't be complacent, don't be nervy and just see how it goes. But I, I don't know if I'm looking forward to it. We'll see. It's, it's annoying because, uh, well, we need, number one, we need to wait for Brendan Rodgers to talk tomorrow to find out maybe fitness updates, 
Carl Vickers, as you've mentioned, Dylan. Um, but yeah, we go into this game knowing what our weaknesses are, Kieran. We go into this game knowing that what what we do wrong in Europe. Um, you've got Atlanta's last mm. game in front of us. So do you like to talk us through what happened? Uh, they were one of the, the legs on my winning coat in yesterday. So. <laughs> <laughs> Shat and cashed it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm desperate for the money, don't I? But, I mean, I'm, I was just looking to see what the lineup was like to see if they were resting any day. Adam all Lookman taking half in half time, by the looks of things. Fucking resting them for. <laughs> was it, was it, wasn't it an injury by Nah, chance, that's what it? I was checking. Nah. I don't think it was, yeah, but fucking. He's gonna score the hat trick and then come half like ADM. Yeah, mate, <laughs> the game's fucking. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you can all score hat tricks, mate. But I mean, like Atlanta, you're looking ahead to it. even in the Champions League, it's good in league form that because mm -hmm. um, we'll hopefully we'll know the fucking confidence boost to them. Uh, <laughs> but like we want to Dortmund, but see, yeah. that wasn't much of a confidence boost. Dortmund have been chasing no, no. us. <laughs> they, they just need a wee pick, pick me up in the uh, players, but fucking nah. Well, the first game. No, 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 draw with Arsenal. Yes, that I think aye? so. Arsenal saved a penalty uh -huh. to stop them for getting beat as well. Then I'm pretty sure they went and beat Shakhtar like they, three uh, or four three now, now, I think, so away like from home. So they're obviously a, a good European side. Europa League winners, as we mentioned, got a, a squad full of talent. It's going to be no easy feat whatsoever to try and, I would say, try and get a result, but to even try and keep this team at bay because... You, you don't play the kind of football they're playing against the top opposition like by Leverkusen in a Europa League final and expecting no bit on like a sort of attacking onslaught for the full game. Mm -hmm. And it's just how well we can cope with that because as we proved against Dortmund, we're no use to the ones having to sit in and defend. And even when we try and play our style of football, we just get like they, you, they just pass through the press basically. And it's how well we can adapt to that. And Rogers came out and said nothing's going to change about the yeah, style, which is, is a wee bit disconcerting. But as we said, gone into the, the Dalton game, yeah. we'd moan if we sat in and got pumped. So Am we're going to get pumped either way when you think about it that way. But you wonder where the, the optimism <coughs> comes from in these yeah. games because you just feel so out of your depth when you see results like 7-1 against us in Dortmund. It, it really does dent your confidence going into the rest of the games because you've got Atlanta then Leipzig at home and we've played Leipzig at home in the last couple of years and we mm -hmm. know that that's not going to be an easy game either and I don't know. I, it would be, I think it would have been ideal after the Dortmund game if we had maybe young boys mm -hmm. or club brews straight away. Just games may really level to try and kick you on but... Nah, it's it's not it's going to be far from easy on Wednesday night. See, my opinion of what Rod just said is 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 frustrating to hear because obviously we do need to change something. But I get where he's coming from in the sense that we don't need. Ho I don't think there's a need for wholesale changes. Mm. It's just defensively something needs to. We need to tweak up how we defend. It can't go on like that. We leave ourselves far too open time and time again. Maybe it's a matter of quality in the defense. Maybe it's as simple as that. But simply put. We can't allow the same openness in the game that what we allowed against Dortmund. Um, we voluntarily allowed them uh, to encroach our back four far too many times. We wouldn't close down certain players that was causing us problems. That can't happen again. And whether you've just got to maybe sit the midfield deeper for a while and, and leave, maybe do what Aberdeen done, you know, mm -hmm. they play, they let the three, as you said earlier on, sit up top mm -hmm. and we, they, they sat deeper. With, do something like that. We're not asking for a wholesale park the bus style change, yeah. but something that does have to, to have to just be tweaked, I would say, so to, to stop these embarrassments. Um, because this is the thing, remember when Ange, was, Ange came out and he said, listen, I, this is how I want to play in Europe, this is what we're going to do, and, and we praised him for it. The only thing is that Ange didn't really suffer these hidings as, you know, he had the only the, the one that was against Real Madrid. So, yeah, it, it is the football we want to see, it's just maybe not the right, I know. The right it's, time sometimes. i seen somebody say yesterday as well, it's like, we would be a really good counter-attacking team, and like, that is true if we could defend as well nah, in Europe, but it's a big part like, the, the pace we've got up front is frightening. So it's like, on paper, it should be a valid possibility because you've got Kyogo up top who's rapid Dyson Maeda who granted was far from his usual self on Saturday and I think that's something that's going to be noteworthy going into Wednesday if he can up his levels again because I thought he was just a bit sluggish yep. which we've been singing his praises all season as well and I, like, you couldn't fault him but that game on Saturday even when he was running forward with the ball 
he just looked dead slow and no, I'm not going to say un- uninterested, but just didn't. He looked far from his usual self, and even when it came to tracking back, he lost the ball. And it's maybe like if that happened in any other game this season, you would think he loses the ball and he's straight back to mm-hmm. go back and get it. But it just didn't happen. We can't afford that sort of sluggishness on on Wednesday. I I feel like when you go into these games, but you need so much luck on your side as well that you need the other team not to turn up and to the best of their abilities. You need just a, a slice of luck when it comes to getting the ball forward you've seen that in the past but I think first and foremost we need to get the basics right mm-hmm. on Wednesday you can't afford to be gifting possession to people when you're not even under pressure I think if you're playing it out for the back you're going to need to realise that these teams are able to close you down far better <coughs> than say no disrespect but to St Johnson or that mm-hmm. like these teams know how to do this they play the same style of football they're better at, better at it than you so I think it's a case of being being less tactically naive this time round, I'm not a manager, but so don't <laughs> listen to me. Dylan, you brought up a moment ago the last big result in Italy when we beat Lazio, and it was a great day. But even when I look at Italy last year against Lazio, we weren't we weren't good. We weren't good by any stretch, but we weren't terrible either. Mm-hmm. We managed to walk away without embarrassing ourselves. And Celtic were, if you remember the squad that played that night, we were nowhere near our best. I think. Uh, all three of our key att- I mean who was the front three that day was it Forrest Palma and I think Kyogo might have played was that the front three in Rome last year I remember it being a bit different I imagine just I think Bernardo up, uh, started as well as a couple of changes there was just a lot of injury problems and fitness mm-hmm. issues going into that game and we just uh, maybe I'm wrong in the front three I'd have to look it up but um, it just wasn't great but we still we went over and we were a bit more resolute and that was against a team who finished top four in, in at least uh, prior season so we can do it. it it's just a matter of of doing things right and and I don't know just I think it was that way as well that game it was two late goals it was like not in each time about seven eight minutes like I think I like what Keelan said see like the free up front like see if you just saw us you don't need to start it like that but See, Dortmund had so much space, mm-hmm. and they just we couldn't even string a pass at the, the back, try to play out, and they punish you. Like we seen it every time they went forward as well, they looked like they were going to score. So see, if you just have that, but I just at the start, just that calm and composure. Like it's easier saying it here. Like we're not the players, but if they can just step up like that, that last game, I think as well we had, we did have some chances as well. So. Aye, it just, it'll be an interesting one to see how we approach it, considering the two games have been so different Aye. at the start of the Champions League. But now. Nah, um, be a big help if Vickers is back as well. I feel he is more solid we need him back, in this. But I, I think that I'm not meant to be that cynic, but I would I, if I see the back four doesn't have Vickers on Wednesday, Dylan, I, I don't think we can do it. I don't mean to be a cynic, but I just I'd really doubt our chances. Oh, it's still early days with Trusty. I, f- I see a lot of people jumping on him, but it has been is a big worry ah, with trust team skills um, just again especially if you might not have Greg Taylor I'm not saying Alex Valley no, the no. score right behind me but it could be a bit nervy going into ah, that game with that but same back four because I don't I, I agree with you 100% I, I don't want to jump on the back of Trusty but I think that one thing between the two centre halves at the minute is that when both of them run they look as though they're trying to pull a bus mm-hmm. and Vickers isn't the quickest player in the world no. by any means but I think he makes up for it with his just general intelligence which Trust him, maybe hasn't fully got yet, and and I think the scales has been brilliant this season, but he's so much better when Vickers is beside him, so I, it, it's huge to have him back in Wednesday if he's there. Um, hopefully, Rod just provides us with that good news tomorrow because, uh, boy, do we need it. I think that's thing with scales. Like I think scales has started the season brilliantly like they did last season, um, but I don't think he scales is like I think we're treating scales and as he needs to be the main man mm-hmm. for Trusty, which. Doesn't really work with skills, so as you said, it looks just more comfortable, more solid when Carter Vickers is by his side, yeah. especially in Europe because like Trusty did get through into that game to be fair to him. So, but I don't know. We'll see it. I just want to avoid a start at Dortmund again, man. As yeah. you, you kind of touched on it, Dylan, but fuck you know, like see if they score in like a minute, I might just turn it off. Honestly, and the only worst part is the fact that he equalised like two seconds and later and then bang the middle of Scott. It's a nice bit of play that goal for us. It shows that we can do it. You know what I mean? It shows that we can play football, but we just need to. You know, we can't concede at the rate we're conceding. We're just, we were just too nervy. Yeah, the, I, the Dortmund game, we're just all over the place. Scared. It's just chaotic. Scared. That's what it looked like. Um, yeah, well, like, oh, by the way, do you know who the referee is for Wednesday's game? Or uh, 
Fire Nerd. Yep. Uh, the same referee gave us two red cards. And oh, class. <laughs> <laughs> so, as soon as we get a player sent off and a goal done in the first three minutes, I'm going down to the concourse. Man. Would you like to give a Kieran's Coombe Corner ahead of that news? <laughs> fucking... Owen Tiago home to somehow get registered for the game. <laughs> That's what you said the last time, right? That's what we were missing, the red card for the Dortmund game. So, <laughs> with that ref, <laughs> could be coming. Yeah, it might be coming. It might finally be coming. Um, aye, it's a... Oh, I don't know. I just, I, I really can't if I'm, but I don't know. The, ne- the next time we're in here, it'll probably be like not till next, as we try and get back into our schedule, it probably won't be till like next Thursday or something. And God knows, we'll be two, will we be three games down by the next uh, time we give her? Oh, no. Weekend and then midweek. Dundee. Dundee yeah, yeah. So we'll be like three games down by the time we. That's the Aberdeen Rangers one and all, so. God that could knows. Could be an interesting episode. Ay, God knows what the tone's going to be in here. Like, where are we going to be? What's going to have happened? Like, it's such a big week for Celtic. Yeah. They surely tune in. <laughs> <laughs> Any, before I go through the team and and and, and that kind of uh, side of things, is there anything you would like to add about the game in general? Uh, I, we we sort of lightly touched on it there, but I think it's going to be a big one for Alex Bowie on yeah. Wednesday because I think he was, it was far from his best against Aberdeen. I thought, and it's going to be an even bigger test on. Uh, Wednesday night against a team of far be- better quality as well than Aberdeen, but nah, I I feel like it maybe people in the sport have maybe made their minds up on them already. I'm not going to jump on to any bandwagons. I'm still willing to give my chance, and we've not really got much option now, have we? With Greg Taylor's injury, but <laughs> exactly. I, I think it's it's a big step up from I think to be. Playing at this I, level I back consistently, him. I back him. I think he done things at the weekend mm. that were good and. At, uh, Equally, I think mm-hmm. he'd done things that were bad, and, and I think it's just you know what comes with the game. A, like the sign of the full team on. Nah. Like, oh, see as well. Like before we move on to anything else, see, what the fuck was that? Well, there was like some voodoo shit going on with that goal up at our end uh, at the Lisbon Lions stand because in that first half, the goalkeeper for Aberdeen was fucking woeful. He was making hundreds of mistakes. Saying Casper Schmeichel does like the exact same thing in the yeah. second half. I'm like, what the fuck, man? What has happened up there? That whole thing with Casper Schmeichel, like. Hanging out, like he'd get it to scales, and then every cunt just screaming at him, like, kick it. <laughs> <laughs> he was ready to turn right into the fucking Aberdeen and put him I know he was, it was nuts. Um, I, so, very quickly, uh, we'll go through our team prediction, I suppose, uh, which I, I don't think requires much conversation, but there is a couple of changes that, that could come from the Dortmund game. So, Schmeichel and goals, of course. The back four, should Vickers be fit, will surely be Johnson, Vickers, Scales, and, and Taylor. And it's as simple as saying if Vickers isn't fit, it'll be trusty. He was training as well, so I thought he was just going to be keeping him for the day. Did I say Taylor? I <laughs> better say Valley. My bad. Dylan, what were you saying there? Sorry. Uh, no, just he was training when he cut a Vickers, so I thought maybe he was just keeping him for Wednesday, but maybe because of the Aberdeen comeback, he didn't come on, so uh, I don't know if he would just, he probably would just throw him right in, wouldn't he, if he's fit? He's, if he, he, you need to it this way, if he's fit, he plays. It's none of this arsing about, like, oh, mate, come on. <laughs> got to, he's got to play. Simple as that. Um, so that would be the back four. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I didn't mean to say Taylor. I was wondering why you were staring into space as if I'd said something <laughs> terrible or controversial. Midfield three. Now, in Dortmund, we started McGregor, Engels and Bernardo. Uh, I thought it was the wrong decision. And after he scored at the weekend... I'm starting to think, well, not starting to think, I still think that this weekend Hattati should play again. What would be your midfield freeze? Would you have Hattati or Bernardo? Hattati. I think it needs to be Hattati. I thought he was quite good on Saturday. Uh, I just think that he was missing against Dortmund. His creativity, uh, and he, we, like, well, not in track mm, back, but we say that, you know, that. he came on and straight away he played a pass that could have led to a goal. Uh, mm. Adam, he just had a poor finish. Um, but that's what Hattati gives you in the European games, that, that quality, that risk. I know. I, 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 I do think you need to take a risk. We spoke about getting the ball at the park on the counter attack, and I, d- I don't think there's going to be many players better to pick out mm-hmm. that long pass. Or I, I just think he looks comfortable at that level, and hopefully, I'm not proved wrong if he starts on <laughs> Wednesday and has an absolute fucking stinker. But I, I would rather, I'd feel more comfortable going into the game knowing we've got somebody of his quality starting alongside McGregor and Engels, probably. Mm-hmm. But I, I think that'll be the midfield three. That's what I would play anyway. And in front three, it'll be Kuhn, Kyogo, and Maida. Aye. I don't think there's much dispute around that at all. Aye. I think that's the best of them we can field currently anyway. Aye. And it's a good team. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to buy into no. some of these tweets saying that the squad's suddenly shite or that we're terribly equipped. We aren't obviously as strong as we'd like to be. I mean, obviously there's areas you'd like to improve. There always is areas to improve. But a couple of results isn't going to change my mind on what is a good Celtic team. 
until we get pumped on Wednesday. Then. <laughs> <laughs> There's no other options. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to ask score predictions. Thank fuck. Uh, that's just <laughs> I can't say too much. Are you looking forward to Mark? What are you looking forward to most apart from, like in, about Italy in, in general? Like, are you looking forward to anything? Pasta, pizza. Um, I don't know, Milan's actually somewhere I've never, like, see if I was, like, wasn't going for the football, mm. I think I'd never go, yeah. like, the, the only thing that I wish we had time to do was go to Lake Como, but uh. we've got all the time on the last day, but it's a, it's like an hour and a half on the train out. And you and Callum could reenact I'm Padme. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, I'm not there. Um, I, it'll be good, I'm, I'm jealous, I'm looking forward to seeing all the photos and such, keep, keep safe, stay away from any fascists, mate. Nah, they're out for a good results. result for you as well. Hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, if it's a poor result, I'll, I'll gear a week after. <laughs> uh, right, so let's end off the episode with some Q and A questions quickly, uh, and then we can get into recording a thunder club. So uh, we've got a lot from last week. Some might be outdated. So if we don't answer them, sorry, but there might not be a point by this point. Um, first off, thoughts on Mo Kamara. He won the Celtic Congo games. So glad it wasn't a yeti, man. <laughs> <laughs> for the second time. Can't believe that big Mo Kamara, mate. Back for the dead. I nice. actually loved him, man. Did you? <laughs> yeah, Mo Kamara <laughs> <fan>? <laughs> Random, <laughs> I, The only thing to remember, see, I was too young to remember much of him because he played for us in like 2006. Um, but what I remember him from is uh, Pez that year. He was so good in Pez. I don't know if anybody played it, but I... I, I think that was my first... Pez 06 was uh, it? Yeah, it was, that was my Pez, first game uh, Mo Kamara was unreal he was, he was either that or he wasn't unreal and I just remember him but he was unreal <laughs> in my head Pez 06 on the PSP man Aye, oh, that yeah. was it that was it um, do you think playing Aberdeen before Atalanta and Leipzig will help prepare us better asks Cal um, I don't know because going into Saturday I was thinking aye but like, obviously they, they did give us a good game in that, but for Meister is setting tough, it was as attacking their mm. goal, the way it's been against many other teams in the league. So, I mean, it's obviously good to know, have that sort of challenge of having to defend quality counter-attacks, which is something we're going to face on well, any time we've got the ball and lose it on Wednesday night. So you can look at it from that point of view, but we still did have the majority of the possession and it wasn't as evenly split as people might have thought going into the game. So... Yep. I, I think half and half with that, to be honest. Um, I'll, I'll come to Adam, who says he had a chippy opposite the five ways that was good. Didn't get a kebab pie on Saturday. Sorry about that. Neither did you. I know. And I, I, read, I read that comment and I'm starting to think the fact that me and Adam never got a kebab pie is the reason we, <laughs> <laughs> we drew the game on. I'm a superstitious man. And but I've never had a chip out of that. Chippy. It actually does smell quite nice. Uh, it does. I've passed it plenty of times and just never bothered, but he said it was banging. Um, also, has the Dortmund game ruined the confidence of the team or is it just a huge overreaction? We've kind of touched on yeah. that, so we'll revert back to the start if you want to hang it. Uh, and Aberdeen are just a good side. Yeah. Um, Aaron asks, and this is I'm going to tell you both to do this, right? Go away, have a think. Aaron, please ask this again next week and I'll forget to ask it again because I keep saying I want to put this in the TikTok. Have a think of who's on your Celtic Mount Rushmore. And next week, I'm going to ask you for your Celtic Mount Rushmore because we should maybe have a four man next week. So, can I bring in a paper mache Mount <laughs> Rushmore in the faces? <laughs> Did you ever make it in paper mache in like primary school? Uh, we had to do it for a Scotland uh, topic in primary school when it was like the Wars of Independence and that, but my dad made my castle for me. <laughs> <laughs> and let's like, see the turrets. It was like, you know, I used to get the big cylinder things, uh, like twiglets and aye, like, aye, aye, like, like uh, cheese balls. They, they were the turrets in the corner covered in paper mache. <laughs> and I had the draw. Uh, the drawbridge and that had a wee moat sounds but good that I know I think I won a prize for it I didn't, I didn't even, eh, no dear fuck <laughs> <laughs> I think it was about that size just still in my room okay, years of age kept in a <laughs> prize winning moat <laughs> um, Dylan why doesn't Brendan play compact and sit in when oh, we kind of touched on that sorry Dougie sorry Dylan as well not to get you <laughs> um, would you let oh Here's a question. Dylan, I'll come to you. Bernardo Boy says, would you let Hitati go for 10 to £15 million pounds and buy Lennon Miller? Ah, uh, i seen that. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't, it's like, I don't know, it's a weird one because, you know what I was going to say, actually, a shout out to Luke McCown. I thought he, again, since yep. he came on for the bench, I thought he was absolutely, no, outstanding, but he was brilliant. I think he made things happen that, so. But nah, Hitati, 10 £15 million. Yeah. I like Lennon Miller. I like Lennon Miller as well. He's been uh, brilliant this season. I'd like to sign him. He's one of the standouts, isn't he, outside uh, uh, all the other teams for 
Bring me but I think I for the know. sake of Lennon Miller's career, he won't come to Celtic or Rangers. I think he, he'll be following the Serie A yeah, or yeah. something. He can't come to Celtic unless he's guaranteed to be Aye. starting. And it's as simple as that. People might not like to hear that, but it's true. And I, if I was like, if I was pals with Lennon Miller, I'd be telling him, "Don't fucking bother." Like, if he's not getting any guarantees of coming in and being like, you can like if you if you show you're hanging, yeah. like you're going to be future captain or whatever. But I think for the sake, I think he could go higher. To be honest, yeah. I think that's probably our most stacked position. I think you've got yeah, no. so obviously about Bernardo in as well. And then, oh wow, I'm getting replaced. Crefo said, how much money would it take for the Thunder Club to buy Ryan out and install Kieran as the host? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. <laughs> Just host a full channel, Kieran 118, I'm fucked. But we don't acknowledge it. <laughs> uh, That's I, I got to your loft in that and film it. <laughs> I know you are sitting in like what would look like the host seat, really, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Well, I was going to say, Kieran, I'm going to let Kieran start hosting the, uh, the Twitter question segment because, you know, saves my voice for being constantly... My voice is quite hoarse this morning, man. <laughs> hoarse. Uh, start a Celtic Defender Pro Clubs team. I hate Pro Clubs. Have you played the uh, Rush? I've played like the career mode. Uh, yeah, academy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> academy <laughs> stuff, but I've not played Rush itself. That's actually alright. Like, is it good, Because eh? uh, I, I was like, always, you know, it's like with FIFA, man, you're like, oh, do you bother with this year? But uh, it's been a nice wee change, yeah. You oh. play with your mates and that, so. I've seen a lot of your pals talking mm-hmm. about it and stuff in, in, in group chats, but uh, I, I've not even bought it this year. I've no, no for me. I wicked your board, man. I just got the new NBA there. Just thought I'd give that a bash, you know what I mean? Change up a bit. Um, make a Celtic prediction to happen in the next five years. Yeah. Everything that stands out. That's a good question. It's a good question. Uh, it's a good question. Um, I done, do you know what? There's another one. Keep it for next week. Dwell on it and think of it because don't make them up in the spot. I done that a few years ago and it went tips up. So I done a video. <laughs> I think it must be like five, I think it was maybe 2019 I'd done it, and it was like, things that I think will happen at Celtic in the next decade. Number one, we'll win 10 in a row, so that didn't go great, and then I had like, number two, Scott Brown will be Celtic manager, which is still time. That, that was going to be my one, I was going to say, <laughs> Brendan Rodgers to leave to a mid-table Premier League side mid-season again, <laughs> and Scott Brown. Scott Brown to come in uh, as scare taker. I can't remember what else I had, I think that I had... Callum McGregor to become captain, which has happened, um, and a couple of other daft ones. And they, oh, we uh, I think I think I said something about like Europe, like oh, we'll we'll get like, to a European semi final or something. <laughs> Couldn't I be a new be our best ever player? <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Let's go back and watch it. So to have time to think about it. Trust me, you don't yeah. want to make them up on the fly. I was so excited about having the best <laughs> 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 Um Oh God! Go. Oh, Declan asks uh, or a pint mail. He asked for Kieran's a pint. Well, obviously, mate. <laughs> Kieran's opinion on wing. What's your opinions on wing stop? Have you had it yet, Dylan? No, but I've seen it. I don't know if it's new, but I've seen it. The one at the Phoenix. Uh, it's dead been busy. there a while now. Uh, uh, I need to try it, man. It's nice. It, it's banging, it's but nice. it's overpriced. It is overpriced, but it's but good, man. It's I, good I, I ordered for the ghost kitchen a couple of times before the actual shop opened up in Glasgow, mm-hmm. but. No, it's good at going into the shop in Glasgow as well. It just feels a lot fresher and you can actually get the chips because if you get it delivered, the chips are just soggy and not worth it. But the Louisiana rub on the, the burger, that's the way you go. Um, I have a fear that we're not going to have an awful lot of time left in here, so I'm going to ask a couple of questions just to finish up. Number one, Baldy Prick says he approves of Dylan. So... Appreciate that, Baldy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't call him Baldy Prick. No, nah, yeah, yeah. oh, he's a fan of me, I can't do that. It's always funny in the live streams, they're like, Baldy Prick says, and people, oh, that was uncalled for. It's his name. <laughs> um, a couple of, a lot of, uh, actually, we didn't even get to cover the Paul Tisdale stuff in this podcast, but I, I guess it's kind of outdated now he's here. Yeah. Uh, oh, hopefully it makes a difference. <laughs> there's, your, there's, there's my thoughts on that. Um, best... Oh, oh, your most outlandish food opinion, says Jack Daly. Um, I mean, I've said it before, but I'm not as big a steak pie fan as everybody else in this country is. Nuts. Me too, by the way. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm not a steak pie. Not a steak pie fan? Nah. I, I, like, I, like pies my, on top. I, I like my pie occasions to be filled with filthy donut meat. Ah, fair enough. Have you got any other outlandish food opinions, Dylan? Nah, I don't know. Um, I, I, I hate tomatoes, and I love tomato sauce, so it's a bit weird that I hate tomatoes on burgers and yeah. that. So. I've grown into just bearing with them. I used to yeah. peel them off stuff, but now if it's there, I just have it. You know, I just Can't do it, man. Nah, it took me, I, I mean, I was like 22 before I could do it, so like, <laughs> it took me my time. Um, I think mine's just probably like, I, I, I hate hot dogs. 
I, I don't know if that's Ooh, it, but is that because hot, hot dogs are like scrap fucking meat. Uh, like the man's fucking Costco are edible because they taste nice, but the uh, meat in them is still shocking. Uh, like, uh-huh. but anyway, hmm. <clears throat> that's another one we could have a think about. I'll, I'll have an opinion on the McRib because I'm going to get one today, I think. So have tune in these next week. I'll tune in next week. I came with the Thunder Club content just as a McDonald's drive through. <laughs> <laughs> McRib, please, none left. What? <laughs> what, did <you> what, <laughs> what, what did you think? What, what did you think? What was he saying again? What did you think when they said the milkshakes were off? Distraught. <laughs> <laughs> right, and to finish off, rank these five Boric, Forster, Gordon, Hart, and Schmeichel. Is that a Celtic guy? Aye. Aye, just a Celtic alone. Don't take in their whole careers. Because if it was whole careers, I think that pro- you're looking Aye. at Schmeichel Hart being number one anyway. And But their Celtic careers alone, I'll go first because I can pick mine. I think mine's would be Boric number one, Forster number two, Hart number three, Gordon number four and Schmeichel number five but Schmeichel's only number five because he's been here eight games so mm. maybe that'll change coming into the season I think I'd copy that but maybe as much that hurts me today maybe swap Boric and Forster and put Forster to that because I loved uh, Arthur Boric but I don't know Fraser Forster okay Dylan uh, I think I'm the same only just because of recent memory see like the Barcelona game and mm-hmm. the, the cup final against Rangers like they were just individually outstanding so I just uh, as much as I love Boric I'd probably edge it to Forster and then Maybe just put Gordon at the bottom just just because it's Gordon. Like, yeah, prick. Right. <laughs> so I was going to put Gordon at the bottom, but plus I, Michael broke the record. So I fuck it. Do you know what? I Gordon's <laughs> at the bottom. Faster. <laughs> break your leg again. That's terrible. Um, right. Anyway, uh, there is a lot more questions there, but uh, we do need to get a rush on this week yeah, because go, like, I, I think ten minutes, ten, left ten maybe here. twenty minutes left in here. I just seen that Man United posted that like, one year ago. Bobby Charlton passed away, and I was about to go. Oh, Bobby Charlton just died, and then I realised. <gasps> <laughs> 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 <Bit late. laughs> anyway, what a way to end the show. Like and subscribe. Thank you for joining us. We're going to swoosh into the Thunder Club now. So if you haven't joined and you want to join, check below in the video. Cheerio.